Okay, so let's jump back into interaction styles and pick up where we left off. So interaction styles is a model we call psychophysiological. So anybody wanna type into the chat box what they think that term means, psychophysiological. Yeah, just go ahead and type it in. Oh, there's some, yes, that's, that's an interesting idea. Yes, <laughs> excellent, yes. <laughs> Terrific, okay. Most of you caught on pretty quickly. Psychophysiological is a combination of psycho, meaning the mind, and physiological, meaning the body. So this is a mind-body connection that we're looking at in this model. Now, interaction styles tells us the how of our being. It deals with what is termed the affective domain of psychology, and it describes how we do what we do. Now, this model describes aspects of the personality that are flexible. This is not a rigid model. It's not a box that we're trying to put anybody in. Uh, there's a lot of flexibility in this model. Now, interaction styles theory describes how we do things, how we interact with others, how we try to get things done, how we play in a group or a team, what our basic drive is. It's about native energy. And that's why it's so important to understand and know this model because it helps us understand what gives us energy and what takes energy away from us. Now, I use a bunch of uh, water metaphors to describe the four different styles in this model. So as I go through these four styles, see whether you can recognize yourself in any of them. I'm not gonna ask you to choose just now, but just pay attention and see which ones resonate with you. So first of all, we have people who go with things energetically and can direct resistance. Now, the metaphor for these kinds of people are snorkelers. Now, if you've ever been snorkeling, you know that you're floating on the water and some people don't even think it's a sport because you're not doing anything. You're just floating on the top of the water. But you know that underneath, especially if it's a, a tropical waters, there are all kinds of activity going on. There might be turtles, uh, there's fish, there's coral, there's algae, there's just seaweed, amazing things to take in and a whole world down there. So even though it looks as though these snorkelers aren't doing anything, they're actually very busy. And if a boat should go by and kick up some waves, that's okay. They're just going to ride the waves out. It's not a problem at all. So they look calm and peaceful on the outside, but there's a lot happening underneath the surface. So those are the people who go with things energetically and can direct resistance. Next, we have the kinds of people who move toward energy and engage it. And the water metaphor for these people are surfers. Now, if you've ever been surfing, you know the deal. You can't just, you know, drop your surfboard in the water and jump on and ride away. It doesn't work like that. Usually you see the uh, surfers standing at the edge of the water and they're all looking and looking, holding their surfboards, hoping for some great waves to happen. And when they see a wave start to form, they're gonna put those boards down in the water. They're gonna paddle out. They're going to meet the wave. And once they meet it, they're going to get on it and they're going to ride that wave all the way back into the shore. And once they get to the shore, well, the waves kind of petered out, so they have to do it again. They have to pick up their boards, look for another wave, go out, meet another wave, and again, ride it into the shore. So these are the people who move toward energy and engage it. Next, we have the kinds of people who push against energetically and make things happen. And the water metaphor for this kind of people are water skiers. Now, if you've ever been water skiing, you know, just like the surfers, you can't just drop the skis in the water and jump on and away you go. It doesn't work like that. You actually put the skis on, a boat has to pull you, but I'm not gonna get into that right now. 
But what you have to do is you push your skis against the water, you create resistance. And through that resistance, that's what keeps you upright and moving through the water. And if you're like this guy, you can even create these beautiful, you know, waves and, and, and bubbles around you. But it does require that pushing against the water. So these are the people who push against energetically and make things happen. Last, we have people who move away from energetically and get space. And the water metaphor we use for this type of person is the lifeguard. Now, the stereotype of the lifeguard is usually there in a lifeguard chair, which is high up and a little bit away from the source of water, like a swimming pool or, or something of that sort. And it may seem like they're detached, they're disconnected, they're not paying any attention, but actually they always have that one eye on the water. And from that um, standpoint of being up in the chair or even like this guy standing alongside the water, they're able to scan and keep an eye on, dare we say, the big picture of things. They always can have a, a sense of what's going on without actually being involved. And that's what we want from a lifeguard. We don't want them involved. We don't want them playing with the kids or, you know, jumping in the waves or whatever. We want them at a bit of a distance scanning the water to make sure everything is safe and okay and nobody's in trouble. So these are the people who move away from energetically and get space. So those are the four kinds. I hope you were able to identify with one of them, but I'm not going to put that to the test just yet. Now I want to talk about an important topic, which is communication.